Abdelbari Atwan. Welcome back to the mother of all talk shows. Uh, let's take a moment to talk about uh, the camp that we both know so well, Jabalia camp. Describe it and describe what happened to it, please. You know, Jabalia camp is one of the poorest camps in Gaza Strip. And, uh, you know, it is uh, really, really, uh, you know, uh, just uh, full of children, full of uh, mothers, full of ladies. So I was really shocked when the Israeli bombed this camp. It is very na narrow alley um, alleyways and the people are really, st people are, you, in one room you will find 10 people living there or a little bit less. So it is, it is a, a torture. Uh, to be in these camps, but the people uh, are really trying to survive despite the Israeli sanction, the Israeli cage, as you mentioned it several times, uh, George. They, they try to survive at least, but they have full faith that one day they will go back to Palestine. They will go back to their towns, to their villages, uh, to their, you know, uh, 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 village, yes. Uh, so uh, in, in Palestine, real Palestine, uh, personally, I am from uh, Asdud, which is on the Mediterranean. It's now the biggest city on uh, uh, Israel, as they call it. So people are really suffering. Imagine 500 people were bombed by the Israeli. Simply, as you mentioned, George, they, they were trying to kill one man from Hamas. We don't know whether, whether this is true or not. I believe it is fabricated in order to justify this massacre. So it is not only uh, Jabalia, it is also the Nusayrat, which is another camp in the middle of Gaza, was bombed. It is also in Brej, it is also in uh, Gaza itself, in Salah Din streets. So massacres everywhere. When, yet to be honest, I stopped uh, trying to know, to look at the television, because every time I do, there are massacres. Hospitals, imagine that. Al Ahli Hospital were bombed by the Israeli, and that about again, 400 people were killed. Most of them were children. I couldn't look at the bodies, at the corpse of the children, which is all babies, actually, massacred by the Israeli, whether in Jabalia, whether in uh, 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 Ahli Hospitals, or anywhere in the Gaza it is death everywhere. I lost um, tens of my families there. You know, so whenever I call or I receive a call, the internet was cut off completely. But when they have five minutes, they call me and they tell me uh, uh, every time there is very, very sorry news, honestly, about death, about which, which is a disaster by all means. Why they are doing that? Where the international community, where the free world, where the American <clears throat> where the values of human rights, which they were lecturing us all the time. You Arabs, you don't understand. You Muslims, you don't understand. You know, we are the, the heroes of the, uh, you know, free words and the values of human rights. So, look, I'm, I'm really shocked. What happened to the West? George, what happened to the West? Why until now, after 27 days of bombardment of Gaza, which it is 300 and 50 square miles. Why until now the Americans saying no ceasefire, Britain saying no ceasefire, Germany saying no ceasefire. You know what it means? It means, you know, to give the Israeli the green lights to kill, to massacre all the, of Gaza. They couldn't transfer them to Sinai in Egypt and actually clear the, the Gaza Strip completely from them. Now they want to kill them. So this is this is the story. And nobody is caring. Nobody is paying attention at all. Hospital run out of, of, of uh, medicine. You know, a, a, a cousin who is a doctor told me, we actually practice operation on people and children without anesthetic, simply because there is no anesthetic. And poor people, poor patient crying, crying from pain, other things. You know, the, the Israeli are telling the hospitals, no, you should clear out completely. We don't want you here. We don't want anybody here. Now, what they are going to do with the patient people? What they are going to do with those people who are suffering, who are injured, who are actually, yeah, they have a lot of diseases. Where to go there? To, to throw them where? 
Have you ever seen somebody saying you have to clear the hospital from patient? The Israeli are doing it. Have you ever seen, you know, uh, the, uh, yeah, the, the, there are people or army or civilized country, the only democracy in the, in the Middle East, bombing hospital? Have you or p- bombing people who took refuge in the hospitals, on the schools of the UNRWA, United Nations Organization? I am really asking. I am I'm really shocked, George. Honestly, I never expected that. I never, you know, I never thought I will live to the day to see the hospital bombed, the, uh, you know, patients are thrown out of their beds. So ha- tell me, have you, you know, we, we are maybe close, we are the same age. Have you ever heard of something like this? Well, what I never heard of was an occupier uh, which calls itself the victim. Uh, And in that, I I share it with the great Israeli writer Gideon Levy, whose words I've just quoted. Never in history has there been an occupier that tried to portray itself as the victim. We'll come back to the West, Abdul Bari, uh, but I want to talk about the East. Uh, I want to talk about what the Eastern governments are doing. Uh, The Israelis have offered Egypt to pay off their debt, which is $20 billion, if they will take all the population of Gaza. But of course the population of Gaza will not leave Gaza in any case to become refugees again. But... It's an extraordinary offer uh, that they made to them. Uh, The uh, Turkish government is still allowing Israel's oil supplies, 40% of Israel's oil is supplied by Turkey from Azerbaijan in a pipeline across Turkey, could be switched off at any moment. And whilst Little countries in Latin America, thousands of miles away, are kicking out Israeli ambassadors, breaking (coughs) diplomatic (coughs) relations with Israel, Colombia, Chile, Bolivia. There are still Arab countries with Israeli ambassadors sitting in their capitals and still full political and diplomatic relations with them. So we'll come back to the West, but what about the East? Yes. To be honest, you characterize, you describe the, what's happening among these uh, rotten government in the Middle East, you know, uh, because those people are under the American domination, under the American pressure. Look at Turkey, for example, when they tried to rebel against the American, what they did to them? They destroyed their, uh, you know, currency, the the lira there. So the uh, same thing happened in Egypt. When the Egyptian actually say, no, I can't do that, uh, you know, they punished them. They stopped financial aids to them. And they actually create in, internal problems to depose them. But they shouldn't actually submit to this American pressure. They should do as the South American honorable leaders there did. They said to the Israeli, you are criminal. You are killing people. You are massacring people. We cannot have you here. Go home. That's what happened. Even it's not their home. It is my home. Um, it, it is our, our our Palestinian home. You know, we are there. We were kicked from there 75 years ago. We were forced to leave. So, but now there is awakening, George. There is awakening in the Arab streets. On in the Arab actually uh, people now revolting. And I am telling you, you know, Gaza will change the map of the Middle East. Ga- I mean, the the barbaric way of treating the Gazan people, the mass- massacring them, uh, ethnic cleansing them, will change the whole of the Middle East. In 1948, Israel was established on our account, and the Arab reg- uh, regimes actually sided with the British in that time, British colonizers at that time. But And then they were military coup. I expect the same thing could 
be repeated. People are so angry, so frustrated. There are thousands of people actually massed on the Jordanian border with Iraq. And they want to go and storm the uh, Jordanian-Israeli borders in order to fight with the Palestinians. So the Africans, God bless them, kicked the French out of Africa and Burkina Faso and Mali and uh, you know so in, in Niger so uh, simply because they could not uh, live with exploitation of their wealth to and um, uh, send it to France the same thing will happen in the Middle East now people realize that these regimes like the African corrupt regimes and they should go so I expect revolutions like what happened after 1948 Nakba so now the Middle East is boiling and the Israeli actually responsible for this. You know, when they signed Oslo Agreement 30 years ago on the loan of the middle end of the White House and the, the, offering the Palestinians this kind of agreement, offering the Palestinians a homeland, a state. 30 years of negotiation and no state at all, but more massacres against the Palestinians and a plan to transfer the, the to 2 million of Gazan to Sinai. Egyptian government could not take them, said, no, why shall we take 2,000 people? Why should they, why should we uproot them completely from their territories, from their Gaza? And Gaza actually is not a paradise. Gaza, you know, is, is a cage, as you mentioned it several times. But despite that, people would like to stay in Gaza. They don't want to leave Gaza at all. They don't want to go anywhere on earth. And I have a cousin there, and I phoned him, and he's uh, very intellectual. He said, listen, you know, the Israeli wanted to do two things by their bombardment. One thing is to release the hostages, as they call them, and the second thing is to destroy Hamas. So they killed more than uh, 8,500 8, people on Gaza in order to achieve those aims. And they did not at all. They did not, as you mentioned, half of them children, babies. So, and the other thing is, they want to transfer the Gazan people to where? Because there are gas underneath Gaza and they want to exploit this gas. It is, it is greedy. So I believe the Middle East will be changed and I wouldn't be surprised if this actually war enlarged and other people join uh, the Hamas in this war like Hezbollah, like uh, the popular uh, uh, Hashd, like for example the Yemenis and many people, Syrian. So uh, is the Israeli will be happy after that? Blinken, who is visiting the Israeli, saying, I am not visiting Israel as a, a, you know, a, a foreign minister of the United States. I am, foreign, I am visiting Israel as a Jew. Imagine that. You're supposed to be, you're supposed to be the American foreign minister. You're supposed to be belonging to a, a modern country, a free country. Why did you uh, characterize it as a sectarian job for you? Let us live together without saying this is Jew, this is Muslim, this is Christian. And there is a chance to, if we, uh, you know, apply the international legality, but never. Finally, I would like to say this in this uh, part. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked to see that in, in Western world, Western countries, I mean, government, saying that the Israeli has the right of defense, to defend themselves. To defend yourself, it was translated and supported by this government in Europe and the United States, it was translated to commit massacres, to commit ethnic cleansing. So well, this is self-defense to kill children. What did the children do to the Israelis? Did they kill the Israelis? You know, the babies killed the Israeli and other things. So did you give the, Amer the German Nazi the right of self-defense, for example, when they occupied France and occupied other European countries? Tell me, so why usually, why don't you give the Palestinian the right of self-defense? Why you don't help them? Why you didn't, don't help those civilians? Why the AIDS, I mean, human AIDS, was delayed for more than three weeks before it's reached Gaza, at least the people, people. Honestly, George, I'm telling you, well, there is no water. Well, lie, there is no water. There is no food. There is no medicine. Nothing in Gaza. And they are talking about to human rights and they are talking about dignity and they are talking about justice. Abdul Bari Atwan, thanks as always.
I fear we'll have to be talking again in the very near future. Abdel Bari Atwan, the most famous of all Arab journalists, and you can feel his pain, I think, in that interview.